Hey everyone, today we're doing a speed build of a 3D scene that I'm calling the Ocean Cave. You've probably seen this done before in Unreal or Unity, but today we're using the new Gato Engine 4.0. We're also using assets from the Megascan library, my own Gato Sky dynamic sky system, and some of the new features that are available in Gato 4.0. Let's see if Gato can hold up to the likes of Unreal and Unity. Now immediately I'm already seeing that this one cave image here is popping up a lot. And I actually really like the look of that. You got this really nice kind of opening right here at the top, maybe some cool god rays coming through that with the lighting. These rocks here will be excellent for a mega scan asset. You've got some sand, you got some water. I think this is the one. I've grabbed a few images that I'm gonna be using for my sort of visual inspiration. Kind of crazy how different these images can look just in terms of color and, and composition. And you can actually see that kind of god ray looking light peering through that hole at the top. So we definitely need to do that. Apparently it's called the Benegil Sea Cave in Portugal. So if you happen to be in Portugal, go check it out. We'll start by getting the project created. We're gonna go with the Forward Plus Renderer to take advantage of the higher quality rendering. I'll start with a 3D scene that will house everything and get my water and sand set up. For the water and sand, I'll be using mesh instance 3D nodes and plane meshes. Now I also want to set up my main camera that will act as the final viewport of the scene. Because we're not actively moving within the scene, this is sort of like our virtual canvas. The water will make use of the water shader I created in a previous video. You can check that out if you want to see how that was made. The sand will use a material asset from Megascans, and I'll eventually introduce some height noise using a custom shader to manipulate the vertices later on. With my water in place, I need to get the approximate size and positioning correct for my sand plane. Using the inspiration images as a reference, I can position the plane to match the angle of the water and the slope of the sand surface. So I have the two main planes set up for my scene. The next step is to build the scene using placeholder meshes. Now this process is usually called gray boxing or white boxing. And what it does is allow us to build a scene quickly and test for things like perspective, size, and overall feel of the scene without having to deal with or make complex 3D assets. It's not meant to look pretty. My goal here is to get a rough idea of where my high quality assets will go. It also gives me an idea of the depth of the scene, how lighting might affect my objects, and where the scene may need some more detail. I'm mainly using box meshes here and scaling them as needed. Sometimes during the gray boxing process, you want to be more precise about the meshes used and their positioning, but because this is just a scene composition, there is less need to be precise. Okay, so I already have sort of an approximate look based on the reference images that I'm using. I've even got some of the rocks there on the left side. Now the next big thing that I gotta figure out is that top, and we've got that hole that's sitting there in the top of the cave. And what I'm gonna use for that is a really ugly torus shape to give me that hole. Again, the point isn't to look pretty. It's just to get an idea of where everything is going to go. And if I was worried about placing final assets perfectly in the beginning, this process would take a lot longer. Gray boxing like this only takes about 20 minutes or so. And after that 20 minutes, I have a really good idea of the composition of my scene compared to my reference image. With my gray boxing in place, I'm ready to pick and import some assets from Megascans. Megascans offers extremely high quality assets as well as lower quality lots. They give you the option to choose which lots and texture images you want to download when grabbing an asset. Additionally, mesh files are in the FBX format. Gato can work with FBX files with an importer plugin, but I prefer to use the built-in Blender importer so I can use Blender to make any adjustments to my meshes. If you have the most recent version of Blender, you can reference the location of your Blender installation within Gato, and any blend file you place within your project will automatically be imported. And any adjustments you make and save to that blend file will be imported into your Gato project. Pretty cool. Now that I'm working with higher quality assets, I have to spend more time thinking about placement. With large assets like these, you don't even need to have a lot of different meshes. By scaling and rotating the mesh, you can actually get a pretty decent amount of variation. Having meshes blend into others can be a good thing. And because this is a scene composition, we're not really prioritizing optimization. The thing you have to worry about is having visible repetition in your scene which can detract from the aesthetic. 
You can break that up by placing other meshes in and around that repetition, but I also have a little trick you can do in Gato that I will show at the end of the video. The goal here is to fill out the scene with your assets using the gray boxing foundation and make adjustments as needed to build a more cohesive scene. So I've replaced most of my gray boxing. Now I can focus on the sand and some of the smaller 3D assets. For the sand, I'm kind of liking this material here. It has a nice, cool ripple effect that should work well with the lighting. Downloading the material gives me different textures to use for my albedo, roughness, and normal. I simply import those textures and assign them to a material for my sand plane. Then let's replace these boxes with some actual rocks to fill out the scene. So the scene is shaping up, but it, it looks kind of rough. It looks like it comes from like 1998. We need to do some visual polishing. The first thing to do is add some of that height noise displacement to our sand plane using a noise texture that will be added to the vertex Y position. Next, I can adjust my water shader a bit to resemble the ocean a bit more by changing the noise scale, increasing the edge foam effect a bit. A big change can be made by using my dynamic sky system, Gato Sky. Gato Sky is a fully dynamic sky asset with time of day functionality, meaning I can set the time with just one variable and affect the lighting and atmospheric changes of my scene. You can buy Gato Sky from the asset store on my site. I'll leave a link in the description. Already with Gato Sky, I'm getting more dynamic lighting changes. I can improve on this effect by adding a reflection node that will add to the radiance cube map of my scene and bring more realistic ambient lighting. And remember that God ray effect earlier? I can create that effect using some volumetric fog and adjust the setting so it reacts more to light and has less ambient fog. I even added this little decorative lantern from Megascans to give another focal point and light source to the scene. So even with just Gato Sky and our lantern, I've even added a little bit of an Omni light up here to give some fake lighting. We have an okay looking scene. There are some settings within the environment tab of our world environment node, and these settings can improve on our visual look quite a bit. In fact, I'm going to show you right now how it looks with each one of them turned off and on. And there's our finished scene. If you liked the video, drop a like and keep creating.